All right, here goes take a billion. I was like a good way through my story. I was like, I'm doing great at this. And then my computer was like, it's time to update. So I had to do all that shenanigans and now we are back for attempt number what well, feels like a billion but that's okay so yes hello my name is margo welcome to my cluttered living room and today i'm here to tell the story of the stone soup now this story takes place a long time ago where there were three travelers there was one traveler who had a lovely, cute little cooking pot, and he loved this cooking pot a lot, but he hated cooking. He saw the cooking pot at a little shop, and he was like, I think that would make the nicest little handbag. And so he kept the little cooking pot, and he would sling it over his shoulder with a little strap, and he would keep all of his stuff in it as he traveled, and he just thought it was the cutest thing in the world. The second traveler was a geologist and they loved rocks. They loved big rocks and small rocks and shiny rocks and lumpy rocks. They loved all sorts. So whenever they found a cool rock on their travels, they would put it in their pocket. So their pockets were just full of rocks. And the third traveler didn't really carry anything with herself. She didn't really like to carry stuff around. She was just kind of the ideas gal. So even though she never, she traveled light, she always thought on her feet. So they wanted to get to the next village for the night to get some rest. So they walk and they walk and they walk into the village and they discover that this village is a little bit different from all the others they've been to before. Usually when they go to a village, there's a nice place to get food, there's somewhere to go and like get entertainment, you could watch a play, but here, they discovered it was the most boring village they had ever been to. There was no restaurant, there was no theater, and everyone just kept their doors shut really tight. They would just stare at the travelers through their windows. So the travelers walk around the village looking for somewhere to eat. They tried to look for a grocery store, and there was no grocery store. They tried to look for a Taco Bell, and Taco Bell had not been invented yet. So they decided, hey, maybe we can knock on some doors, talk to some people, and get something to eat. Usually people are pretty nice. So the first traveler with the cooking pot goes up to a very nice house. And this house had a gorgeous garden. And he knocks on the door, and somebody opens it. And it is a little kid. And the traveler says, hello, are your parents home? We are some travelers. We have maybe some cool things to trade, but we're really hungry. And the little kid looks at the travelers and looks back at their parents inside and just slowly shuts the door. So the travelers walk along and they walk along and they come to another house. And at that house, they knock on the door and they keep knocking and out comes a little old lady. Now this little old lady has a potato in her hand and she's just working on peeling it. She's peeling it and she's peeling it. And the travelers are excited like, oh, she must have a lot of potatoes. She's just kind of hanging out with a potato. Maybe she'll share. So the second traveler, the geologist, talked to the lady and said, hello, we are travelers uh, coming through the area. And we were just wondering if you could share a couple of your potatoes with us. We could share a story from our travels. Um, we could share uh, some materials we've collected along our way, but unfortunately, I don't think we have money that you would want. And the little old lady looks at them and she just takes a bite out of her raw potato and she shuts the door. So the travelers, feeling very, very hungry and very tired, turn to the third traveler, the one with the ideas, and she decides that they're going to go back to their campsite. So they walk along and they walk along and they get to their campsite and, and they reached their campsite. Now, the traveler with the ideas said, okay, you with the cooking pot, gimme. And the traveler with the cooking pot looked a little bit confused and he said, but this is mine. This is how I carry around my stuff. And the traveler with the ideas said, 
I'm not, I'm not going to hurt it. Just trust me. Y'all got to trust me on this. I'm going to get us some food. It will be amazing. And we won't have to bargain or barter or get rid of anything. Your cooking pot will be fine. So the traveler with the cooking pot reluctantly unloaded all of his belongings from the pot and put them safely in a pile on the ground. He handed over the cooking pot. Now, the traveler with the ideas then turned to the geologist and she said to them, so, you're not gonna like this, but I need you to unload all of your pockets. I need to look at every single rock that you have. Now, the geologist was not none too pleased about this. They were very excited about all of the rocks they had in their pockets, even though it made their pants ridiculously heavy. And the traveler with the ideas said, you really need to just trust me. Trust me on this. I promise that no harm will come to any of your rocks. I only need one, but I just want to take a look. So the geologist to unloaded their pockets and brought out all the rocks that they had. And the traveler with the ideas looked at it. And they looked at the geologist and then they looked back at the rocks and just kind of wondered how somebody could carry that many rocks in their pockets for miles and miles and miles. And the geologist just shrugged. So the traveler with the ideas looks at the rocks and the, she sees big rocks and small rocks and shiny rocks, but she comes upon a rock that is about this big and is just kind of plain looking. It's gray. It looks a little bit like a big old potato. And she picks it up and she says, can we use this rock? And the geologist shrugs and says, I guess I was just going to take that one home to be a doorstop. So sure, go for it. It's not special. It's not shiny. It's not smooth. It's just a rock. And I like rocks. And I think that one's kind of boring. I just thought it was a good size. So the traveler with the ideas took the rock and took the cooking pot and put the rock inside the cooking pot and went to the well in the middle of the town. Now the whole time she was talking very loud about, oh, how sad it is that these poor villagers will never get to try our soup. They just won't come outside of their houses. They just will never know how good this soup is. She fills it up with water and villagers start peeking their heads out of the doors. And she continues to pretend to cry and she says, I just wish we could share this with the world. I just, I'd love to share. <laughs> and the people from the first house they visited came up and it was two dads and their daughter. And they said, okay, well, you came to our house earlier and it didn't seem like you had a lot of food, but what's with the soup? And the traveler with the idea says, well, it's the best soup you will ever have in your life. The best soup you'll ever have, ever. This is our patented magical stone soup. And their little girl says, stone soup? That sounds really gross. I don't, I don't get it. Can, can we go back and play Scrabble? And the traveler with the idea says, I don't think you understand. This stone soup is so important. It has been passed down for generations. We have this magical stone. And she puts her hand into the water and she pulls out the stone that makes the best soup you will ever try. But because no one wants to come and share with us, they won't get any. And the little girl looks at her dad's. She looks back at the stone and she shrugs and she's like, you know what? I'll try your weird rock water. Uh... Scrabble will wait, and the traveler with the ideas says, well, you can try it, but right now, with everything that we have in there, we only have enough for the three of us, but if you were to go and get us some celery and some onions, then the soup, we would have more content. She puts it down, and we would have more content so we could share with everybody. So they leave, and they go and get some celery and some onions. She gets back to their campsite, still pretending to cry. How sad it is that no one will get to try their soup. Only one family. 
and it's a shame. So then, the little old lady, still eating a raw potato, walks up to them, just munching on her potato, and she's like, So, what's with the soup? And the traveler with the ideas wipes her eyes dramatically and says, Well, ma'am, this is the best soup that you will ever try. But right now, we, because of the ingredients we have, we only have enough soup for us, the travelers, and that nice family over there. But if you were to bring us some potatoes, we could cook them. And the little old lady looks at her kind of chewed on potato and then back at the travelers. And the traveler with the idea says, don't worry. I bet, even if you're skeptical, I bet you would like our soup. You just have to bring us a couple of potatoes and then you can have as much soup as you would like. So the little old lady wanders off. And by this time, a bunch of different villagers are coming and looking around, holding different ingredients that they could add to the soup. Because by now, they've heard about this magical soup that this very strange traveler has been crying about. And out of the villagers comes a very small, old, old, old man. And he kind of looks like he lives in a bog. And this is the old swamp wizard that lives on the outskirts of town. And the old swamp wizard says, I would like to dry your rock water, but I would like to add my bucket of live spiders. And the traveler with the ideas says, uh, I'm very sorry. I'm, um, Live spider intolerant, but you can have some anyway if you don't add the spiders. And the swamp wizard says, very well. And he disappears in a puff of smoke. And everyone looks at each other and has decided that they will never speak of whatever that was again. So now our travelers have potatoes, they have celery and onions. Other, um, other villagers have brought them salt and seasoning, and they're cooking this soup. And everyone gets to try it, and the travelers fill up their bellies, and at the end of the night, they clean out the cooking pot. The big old rock goes back in the geologist's pocket, and the villagers go to bed talking about the best soup they have ever tried. Now, the little girl from the first house sits around and just is very interested about what's so special about this rock. She's like, this was some of the best soup I've ever tried. Our neighbors don't really like to share their potatoes, so I don't get to eat stuff with potatoes very often. But there's something just different about it. And the traveler with the ideas shrugs and says, I don't know. I just got, I think they just got it from a lake. And the little girl nods her head and says, I think we have a lake nearby. I think I could probably get a magic rock and share soup with the entire village again because I am really tired of only eating celery and onions because no one around here shares. So the travelers go to sleep with a full belly, a pocket full of rocks, a pot that was once full of soup and is now full of clothing and other traveling supplies, and they get the best night's sleep with the best soup. The end. So. That was my kind of weird rendition of Stone Soup. Uh, I probably missed more than I hit on that one, but it's, you live and let you learn. Um, I'm excited to see everybody else's take on their stories, and I will see y'all next time.